Today, we're going to continue to cover the intriguing history of the Kingdom of Jerusalem and the Second Crusade. I'm Kolo Ink History, and this video is part 2 in a series on the history of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Click on the card in the right corner to view part 1. In this video, we're going to cover the early history of the Crusader States, the fall of Edessa and the Second Crusade. Stay tuned! In 1118, the first king of Jerusalem, Baldwin I, passed away. Having transformed the lands conquered in the First Crusade into a solid feudal kingdom. Due to being childless and with his only brother being in Europe, the barons of Jerusalem elected the Count of Edessa Baldwin of Bork as King Baldwin II of Jerusalem, who in turn handed over the county to his vassal Jocelyn of Courtney. Shortly after becoming king, the political situation in the northern crusader states quickly became volatile. In the early 1120s, the emir of the city of Aleppo invaded the county of Edessa, and while the Muslims did not manage to conquer the city, they did manage to capture both Count Jocelyn as well as King Baldwin when he marched north to aid his vassal. Baldwin would remain in captivity until the year 1125, when the Emir of Aleppo passed away, plunging his realm into political instability. Now, one might initially assume that the death of the ruler of Aleppo and the release of Baldwin and Jocelyn would stabilize the situation for the Christians in the north, but unfortunately for the Crusaders, that was not what happened. After the release of King Baldwin II, he handed over the Principality of Antioch to a nobleman called Bohemond. Instead of taking advantage of the chaotic state of Aleppo, Bohemond entered into disputes with Count Jocelyn, which escalated into an armed conflict, weakening both realms, as well as giving the Muslims time to settle their disputes. The conflict between Jocelyn and Bohemond eventually ended, but were quickly followed by other military conflicts with local factions in the northern Levant, such as Byzantium, the Armenian Kingdom of Silesia, and local Muslim powers that in the early 1130s claimed the lives of both Bohemond and Jocelyn, with King Baldwin dying of illness around the same time, with the throne going to his daughter Melisandre's husband, Fulk of Anjou. With the passing of these lords went the last of the original crusaders who had taken the cross and travelled to Jerusalem. The generation that came after were different, as most of them were born in the crusader states, and in several aspects came to have a quite different outlook towards their Muslim neighbours and the circumstances they found themselves in. Being born in the Levant, the Christians living in the Outremer did not see the Crusader states as only land and places of religious importance, but also as their home. Because of this, the leaders of the Crusader states did not share the earlier generation's uncompromising views towards their Islamic neighbors and were willing to enter into negotiations and even form alliances with them. This difference in attitude was something that were noticed among contemporary Muslim writers who described Christians from Europe as being much ruder than Christians who are born in the Levant. Despite the long life of the Crusader states in the Levant, neither the Christians or the Muslims took any real interest in each other. Among the Muslims there were a profound lack of understanding regarding the Crusaders and their aims, and many simply viewed them as mercenaries employed by Byzantium. It's important to note that the Islamic world at the time of the First Crusade was very divided, with many regional rulers working to advance their own power. In this political landscape, the advent of the Crusaders in the Levant were mainly considered to be a regional conflict among contemporary Muslim writers. Despite living in close contact with each other, neither Christians nor Muslims took much interest in each other's intellectual or religious backgrounds. Most Christians in the Outremer knew next to nothing of Islam, and most Muslims were equally oblivious of both Catholicism and Christianity in general, often referring to it as polytheism. 
The early decades of the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem did not only see a more compromising attitude towards the kingdom's Islamic neighbors, but it also saw the logic of the Crusades taken to its conclusion with the rise of the Christian military orders. The first order that were founded were the Knights Templars, which were founded by a French knight called Hugh of Pain. The order were originally known as the Poor Knights of Christ, and were initially tasked with protecting pilgrims that were traveling between the port cities and Jerusalem. The order early on received support from many patrons in Europe, as well as King Baldwin II himself, who offered them a wing of his palace to use as headquarters. This wing were believed to be situated at the same place as the Temple of Solomon in ancient Israel, from which the order's later name, Knights Templars, comes from. The second main order which were founded were the Knights Hospitallers, who originally were not involved in military affairs at all, but instead started as a simple monk order, setting up and running a big hospital known as the Hospital of St. John in Jerusalem. As the order grew alongside the Knights Templars, it started to take on military aspects to eventually become the military order known as the Knights Hospitallers. As the orders grew in size, their duties and purpose in the East rapidly expanded and got closely intertwined with the interests of the Kings of Jerusalem, as they were assigned more areas to safeguard while offering the kings a permanent and reliable presence of elite soldiers dedicated to the defense of the crusader states. The military orders would show themselves to be of great importance to the kingdom as new threats were looming on the horizon. In 1128, following the political turmoil in Aleppo, a new emir seized power called Imad ad-Din Sengi, often being referred to only as Sengi. Sengi was a ruthless despot and a powerful warrior, who after becoming the emirate of Aleppo, also managed to make himself the ruler of the city of Mosul in the east. Instead of marching on Antioch like the earlier emirate had done, Sengi launched several siege attempts against the Muslim city of Damascus throughout the 1130s. The repeated sieges failed, but took their toll on the city, and seeing no other options, the Emirate of Damascus, in 1139, pleaded for help to Jerusalem. King Fulk, realizing the growing threat of Sengi's state, responded with forging an alliance with Damascus and sending out forces to aid the city. Seeing the combined forces of Damascus and Jerusalem, Sengi stopped his siege attempts and turned his attention east to Mesopotamia. All would be well for a couple of years, but in 1143, King Fulk died in a hunting accident, leaving the throne to his wife Melisandre and her 13-year-old son Baldwin. While Melisandre was an able ruler, the death of Fulk increased the political instability in the kingdom, with the kingdom's crown vassals trying to increase their independence, while at the same time the relationship between the county of Antioch and Edessa were again worsening. Upon being informed that Jerusalem were governed by a woman and a minor, Sengi decided that it was time to strike against the Christians, and marched on Edessa. The Count of Edessa pleaded for help to the Count of Antioch, who refused to send help, and while Queen Melisandre did send a relief force, it arrived too late. In November of 1144, Sengi's forces breached the city walls, and Edessa fell. The conquest of the city were the apex of Sengi's reign, but unfortunately for Sengi, he would be assassinated by a servant for quite mundane reasons soon after, in 1146, leaving his realm to his successor, Nur al-Din. The news of the fall of Edessa had a profound effect on both Christians and Muslims alike. It shattered the Christian aura of invisibility that had existed since the success of the First Crusade. Believing the Crusader states to be in a dire need of help, Pope Eugenius III called for a new crusade, thus starting the Second Crusade. The call for the crusade drew much support from the Cistercian Order and one of its central figures Bernard of Clairvaux, who managed to make King Louis VII of France and Emperor Conrad III of the Holy Roman Empire to take up the Crusader mantle. 
the preaching of Pope Eugenius and Bernard resulted in crusader offensives on three different fronts, to the pagan Wends in the northeast, as well as to the Muslims in Iberia and the Levant. Due to the scope of this video, we will limit ourselves to the offensive that took place in the Levant. After a harsh and dangerous journey through Anatolia, the forces of Louis and Conrad met up in the city of Acre, where they held an assembly with all the barons and clergy in the Crusader states. It was the largest Christian force that had been assembled in the Levant since the First Crusade, but due to Jerusalem still being in Christian hands, it was not clear what was to be done with it. The original goal of recapturing Edessa were considered impossible due to earlier crusader losses in manpower, and Aleppo were considered to be too far away to be a reasonable war goal. Because of this, and due to there being a growing fear that the city of Damascus were going to be captured by Nur al-Din, the crusaders decided to march on the city. While Jerusalem and Damascus were officially in an alliance, this was dispensed with, and in the summer of 1148, the crusader army besieged the city. To the dismay of the crusaders, the siege failed, and the Latin forces were forced to retreat, intensely humiliated. With the failed siege of Damascus, the second crusade in the Levant had ended, in one of the worst possible ways it could have gone. Essentially nothing had been gained, and the blundering attempt to take Damascus had caused the enmity of a former ally, as well as strengthening the crusader state's greatest Muslim opponent, Nur al-Din. It is no exaggeration to say that the crusader states would have been far better off if the second crusade never had been called. Today I hope you learned something new about the Second Crusade, as well as about the history of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. In the next video, we will cover the history of the Crusader States following the Second Crusade.